cancel the SLS. That's right, I said it. And honestly, this phrase is no longer just a sentiment shared by aerospace enthusiasts. It's now a rallying cry echoed by prominent agencies, influential figures, and major publications. Even the US Space Force has voiced concerns. The end of NASA's space launch system may be closer than ever. Amid this shift, SpaceX's Starship, with its rapid progress and impressive capabilities, is emerging as the key to sustaining the Artemis program. So what are these agencies and publications saying about the SLS? And what might Artemis look like without NASA's flagship vehicle? Join us on today's episode of Great SpaceX to dive into the latest developments surrounding SLS and the future of Artemis. As the launch of Artemis 2 approaches in less than a year, questions around NASA's readiness and program costs are intensifying. The Artemis program, while ambitious in its vision to return astronauts to the moon, has been bogged down by skyrocketing expenses and lengthy delays. Artemis 1 alone required nearly a decade and tens of billions of US dollars to complete, a troubling precedent as NASA gears up for the next phases. The space launch system intended as NASA's flagship rocket for lunar missions has become an emblem of these inefficiencies, burdening the program with its high costs and extensive infrastructure needs. Since its inception, SLS has been under scrutiny for its enormous cost, complexity, and limited launch capabilities. Developed in conjunction with the Orion spacecraft, mobile launch systems, and proposed lunar gateway, the SLS is envisioned as the backbone of the Artemis program. However, even some of NASA's closest partners are now questioning the value and necessity of this colossal system. Recently, Colonel Douglas Pentecost of the U.S. Space Force expressed doubts about the SLS's relevance for defense or commercial purposes, noting, It's a capability right now that we, the DoD, don't need. His remarks suggest that within the Department of Defense, there's little interest in leveraging the SLS for missions due to the availability of more cost-effective alternatives. Christina Chaplin, former assistant director at the Government Accountability Office, has voiced similar concerns. She highlighted SLS's production inefficiencies, stating, I don't see the cost going down at this point to be competitive. Chaplin pointed out that the SLS lacks the streamlined factory-style production of private sector rockets, resulting in cost overruns with little chance of economic improvement. Without the manufacturing efficiency seen in companies like SpaceX, SLS's financial sustainability remains dubious. The question of SLS's future viability has led to speculation about whether it should continue. Space journalist Eric Berger has even suggested there's a 50-50 chance that SLS will be canceled, arguing that there are other ways to get Orion to the moon. This sentiment is shared by media mogul Michael Bloomberg, who recently criticized the Artemis program's financial approach. Bloomberg argued that SLS is a colossal waste of taxpayer money, with its cost structure including $23 billion for development and $4 billion per launch, outstripping NASA's initial projections. One of Bloomberg's most pointed criticisms is that even if the SLS does become fully operational, it isn't capable of delivering humans to the moon independently. In his words, it isn't even powerful enough to actually get anyone to the moon, at least not in its current configuration. This forces NASA to rely on additional components, such as the Starship Human Landing System by SpaceX to complete the lunar mission. Furthermore, the SLS's costs are exacerbated by other infrastructure expenses, including the ML-2 mobile launcher, which has ballooned from an initial estimate of $250 million to $2.7 billion. The SLS's Orion module has encountered issues, returning from Artemis 1 with a damaged heat shield that has set NASA engineers back as they scramble to resolve the problem. This coupled with delays on the Lunar Gateway and uncertainties surrounding the upgraded SLS Block 1B variant, adds another layer of concern. The Lunar Gateway, which NASA intends as a staging point for lunar operations, has faced criticism for its high complexity and its questionable compatibility with SpaceX's Starship HLS. The very spacecraft designed to transport astronauts from the Gateway to the Moon's surface. The ML-2 mobile launcher, initially envisioned as a straightforward solution for the SLS, has spiraled in cost, currently totaling around $2.7 billion with no firm completion date. Its contract has logged over 850,000 overtime hours over the past two years, reflecting just how intricate and time-consuming the process has been. 
These accumulated setbacks and cost overruns are taking a toll on NASA's timeline and budget, further delaying Artemis' objectives and risking public confidence in the program. In sharp contrast to SLS's limitations, SpaceX's Starship presents a more streamlined and cost-effective path to the moon. Unlike the SLS, which is expendable, Starship is fully reusable, promising substantial cost savings and faster turnaround times. Its ambitious design allows for in-orbit refueling, enabling long-distance lunar missions without the need for extensive, expensive support infrastructures like the Lunar Gateway. With rapid advancements in testing and development, Starship is set to potentially redefine human spaceflight. SpaceX has made significant strides in recovering and launching its Super Heavy booster using the Mechazilla system, a revolutionary setup that will support Starship's mission cadence. Recent developments in Starship's vertical landing and payload capabilities suggest that it may be ready for lunar operations by 2026, aligning with NASA's planned Artemis missions. Bloomberg summarized Starship's potential succinctly, stating, A reusable SpaceX Starship will very likely be able to carry cargo and robots directly to the moon. No SLS Orion Gateway Block 1B or ML2 required at a small fraction of the cost. With this in mind, Starship offers a compelling alternative to SLS, particularly as NASA faces growing pressure to find more financially sustainable approaches. The challenges facing SLS underscore a need for NASA to reconsider its approach to the Artemis program. Given the substantial investments and limited flexibility of the SLS, it may be time for NASA to lean more heavily on private sector solutions, specifically those offered by SpaceX. Utilizing Starship as a primary launch vehicle could streamline Artemis' goals, cutting down on expenses and eliminating unnecessary logistical components like the Gateway. Embracing a partnership with SpaceX and leveraging Starship's capabilities would enable NASA to achieve its lunar objectives faster and more cost-effectively. This approach would allow Artemis to focus more on resources on mission-critical technologies rather than maintaining a high-cost infrastructure centered around the SLS. As NASA faces the dual pressures of rising costs and increased expectations, a shift in strategy may be essential. The decision to keep SLS or replace it with commercially available options like Starship could ultimately determine the long-term success of Artemis. If you agree that NASA should streamline Artemis by adopting more efficient technologies, show your support by commenting Scrap Launch System and share this update to spread awareness of SpaceX's exciting journey toward making lunar missions more accessible and sustainable. Indeed, if NASA's SLS and associated systems are removed from the Artemis program, the program would undergo significant transformation. The first major shift would likely be the end of the two-rocket launch approach. Instead, a single rocket would carry the crew to the moon, facilitate landing, and then lift off from the lunar surface to return home. This all-in-one vehicle would be none other than SpaceX's Starship HLS. It's a streamlined approach that arguably should have been the plan from the get-go. For Starship HLS to carry out these tasks, certain upgrades would be necessary to optimize crew transport from launch. If tasked with bringing the crew back to Earth, the HLS would need additional features such as heat shields and flaps for safe re-entry. Currently, SpaceX is refining the landing process for Starship and they have over a year to fully master it before Artemis 3. Following this, any necessary design adjustments can be made to further optimize the spacecraft. Alternatively, if SpaceX prefers to minimize changes and maximize reliability, they could substitute NASA's system with their own Falcon and Dragon vehicles, possibly involving a Falcon Heavy. In this scenario, Falcon Heavy could launch a Dragon capsule with the crew, rendezvous with the Starship in lunar orbit, transfer the crew, and then wait in orbit to retrieve them for the journey home, essentially following NASA's existing process but with SpaceX's more cost-effective technology. A third option could see Starship completing the entire journey to and from the moon, bringing the crew back to Earth orbit where they would then transfer to a waiting Dragon capsule for re-entry and landing. Each of these options avoids reliance on NASA's vehicles and would likely be more feasible and reliable than the current setup. If NASA is genuinely considering canceling the SLS, a swift decision is essential. We're nearing the end of 2024 with less than a year remaining before Artemis 2 and under two years for Artemis 3. Early preparation is critical. Even with SpaceX's rapid progress, late decisions from NASA could prevent timely design or operational changes causing delays. Delays could impact the U.S.'s position in the lunar race as China also accelerates its lunar ambitions. Ultimately, the decisions rest with NASA, an organization once at the forefront of lunar exploration but now facing challenges due to inefficiency. 
NASA will oversee and manage the program while SpaceX handles the mission's execution. This approach could be the key to the U.S. regaining its lead in lunar exploration. What are your thoughts on the matter? Feel free to share your perspective in the comments section down below. Otherwise, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.